you welcome back. I've been away all summer, but I am back and with some great news. Oh, good news. Great. I don't I, I don't know how we feel about this, but uh, we've been gone for a long time. I am very sorry. My kids were on vacation. I could not record these guys. Like they said, when they get older, it gets easier. No, no, no. They're older. They're louder. They're they're crazier. Maybe that's what they meant. When they get older, it get crazier. And I heard easier, you know? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. But a lot happened with Destiny 2, the time we've been away. You know, Final Shape came out. It was amazing. Uh, the story was amazing. The, the campaign was amazing. And then after that, we had some stuff happen at Bungie. But they had some layoffs. Then they told us that no more expansions. No more yearly expansions. And we were in a situation where we were like, well, what's next? Where do we go from here? What do, what's the plan? So there was no big horizon. And until today, which is the 10th year anniversary of Destiny 2, by the way, or of Destiny, by the way, today we got our answer in a little thing called Codename Frontiers. And it reads, paving the way for new frontiers. One hour ago, Destiny 2 dev team, today marks the 10 year anniversary of Destiny. We set out in 2014 to do something new and different for our studio. We've conquered the witness, looted dungeons, ascended to the lighthouse and more. Now we look to the future for plotting our course to the stars through codename Frontiers. We close the door to the final shape, but we are opening a new one, a weird one, an exciting one that takes destiny to places it never been before. We're building this future now and are excited to share with you the first glimpse of it today. And it's right here. Codenamed Behemoth. That's not saying like Destiny 2 Apollo is coming out. No, they're using code names. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, a summer 2025 major update, codename Arsenal, fall 2025 major update surge. So there's gonna be two major updates within each expansion. So every three months we'll get a new major update. So you know, expansion, major update, expansion, major update. In three months expansion major update next three months will be second expansion so instead of one huge expansion they're looking to do two smaller ones with new stories new locations new missions new weapons new gear new raids and dungeons seasonal update new and reprised activities new gear new art and artifact mods new modifiers and challenges new sandbox meta new events rewards pass exotic weapon and ornament legendary weapon and armor ornaments your upgrade resources cosmetics and more so i mean it sounds good let's read on this roadmap lays out our plan for year 11 and beyond with some exciting changes to our annual model two expansions per year four major updates of four major updates of free content every year over the next few months we will be sharing more info with you on Codename Frontiers, which is how we are describing major innovations coming to Destiny over the next few years, starting with our next expansion, Codename Apollo. We have several Dev Insight deep dives going live today, and we'll continue to add more to this list over the weeks and months to come. Today, we also have Tyson Green, the game director of Destiny 2, and the Destiny 2 narrative director. Diving through some of our future plans for Destiny 2, our goal is to be more transparent in our communications with you. This means sharing our work more frequently, even if you see our mistakes and false starts along the way. So please remember that our roadmap and plans are subject to change as we get deeper into development. Ultimately, this is your game too. We want you to see more of how it's made and why. If you take away nothing else, it should be this. We are excited for Destiny to change and improve in ways that allow to keep evolving in the future. Dev Insight Dev deep dives you know the fact that there was an activity called deep dives in destiny 2 and now they're calling these dev insight deep dives i'm i'm confused i'm sorry the language is false edit that below you will find a list of dev insight deep dives for various innovations coming to with codename frontiers we'll be building upon this section over the next few months with breakdowns of features and changey changes coming to destiny 2 for activities for game rewards and the portal Take a look at that after we read this article. Our vision is the future of Destiny 2. Tyson Green. My name is Tyson and I'm the game director for Destiny 2. I am excited to speak today about our team's vision for Destiny. First and foremost, we all still love Destiny. It is a unique and challenging game, both for you and for us. I've personally been working on Destiny for 15 years and it still excites creatively. There are not many games I could say that about. But at the same time, we recognize that it has come to become too rigid. Things have started to feel too formulaic and are over too quickly with little replay value. Seasons and episodes keep getting bigger, but and still feel like you're just going through the motion. We believe it's time for Destiny to change, evolve, 
and that our community wants this game to grow and innovate too. And to do that, we need to start breaking some of the... I agree with you. I think the yearly expansion, you do the campaign, you're done. On to the... Now we're moving into the seasonal stuff. First week comes out, do this, we go do that, we're done. That's it. And it's a repeat mode every time. I used to play Destiny every single day. I have 3,111 hours of Destiny on Steam. That's not including the over 2,000 hours I put on my Xbox. Where I got a computer or I got a PC and eventually I came to a point where you know I'm sitting there and I'm like dude it's the same thing every week the seasonal model is not working oh at that time that's that's what I told myself this is this is not working like, every single week every day it's it's a, it's the same thing and that was uh, what season was it? it was a pirate season where it was just every week you did the activity talk to the guy the you went back to the, the helm so you go do the mission and you're done and it was that every week three times a week because you do do it on the character on each character and i just you know i was just playing one day and i was just, i got bored but it just hit me like dude again you know so i'm glad that they see that they, they i'm glad that they recognize this has become too rigid Masters have stayed started to feel too formal like nah, same thing over and over again so i hope that what they have in mind changes everything up and hopefully that works you know, all right, annual expansions. So we're going to start with annual expansions. We've loved creating annual expansions and are especially proud of the final shape. They should be. But the truth is that they dominate almost all our development effort. We need to free ourselves up and to explore and innovate with how we deliver Destiny 2 content so we can invest in areas of the game that will feel more impactful to players. Starting next year, instead of one big expansion, we're going to deliver two medium sized expansions. One every six months. Each of these will depart from the one shot campaign structure we've been using, essentially unchanged Shadow Key. And each will be an opportunity to explore exciting new formats that we are excited to try new things that challenge your idea of how a Destiny experience can be. We are actively prototyping non linear campaigns, exploration experiences similar to German City, or the heck is that word? Metro and even more unusual formats like roguelikes or survival shooters. Each expansion will present a new opportunity to try something, departing from one shot campaigns that were turning away from our, our great storytelling. Going forward, we want to return the mystery and wonder that was woven into the fabric of early destiny. When the story felt ripe with possibilities and an epic sense of exploration and discovery, great stories are as important as ever in our creative vision and Allison will touch me below. That's interesting. Did he say survival shooter? You don't know me. I love me a survival game. One where you build, but you, you gotta put building in there because that's the main thing in survival games is I like to build stuff. Seasons. With a change of two expansions per year, our seasonal model will be changing as well. Instead of three episodes, we will be building four major updates per year, one every three months. Each expansion will launch alongside a major update at the start of a season. And then a second major update will follow three months later to refresh the core game with new and reprised content including activities, strikes, exotic missions, and entirely new modes like Onslaught, rewards, weapons, armor, artifact mods, exotics, and more new weekly events, new features, combat meta, and balance updates. Every three months, they'll refresh everything and that sounds good. I like that. Big seasonal resets will still happen, but now just twice a year alongside the expansions. Each update will be a substantial refresh of the core game, only bringing new activities and reward content. We are also excited to announce that like Destiny 2 Into the Light, these updates and their content will be free to all players. They said free, boys. Let's get it! All right, we want Destiny 2 to be easier for anyone to play or recommend. So we want to remove that major barrier to the experience, which means we need to talk about the core game is Destiny's always available evergreen activity experience. And we need to fix two key things with it. Approachability. First, Destiny 2 is too complex or Destiny is too complex. With literally hundreds of activities, you practically need a PhD to decide what to play and how to get rewards you're looking for. We're going to start to fix this by modernizing the activity you are the director to make it easier for everyone to find and launch into great activities 
and we're rework reworking our rewards mo model to make sure that all those activities offer meaningful rewards. Our deep dives on activities and rewards go into more detail on the changes in particular. Gear and challenges should matter. Agree. Even great activities stop mattering if the challenge dries up and the rewards aren't worth it. So we're investing in a greatly improved challenge customization system to let players of any skill range find the right challenge level for them with rewards that improve based on the challenge level you take. These won't just be simple incoming damage increases either. The team is cooking up some great gameplay modifiers that give enemies some exciting tools to mix everything up on every run. Sorry. We will have a deep dive coming soon to show off some of these new threats. As for the rewards, there will be a higher tiers of legendary gear. Think adept weapons and artifice armor that will be available for these higher challenge ranges in a much wider variety of activities across PvE and PvP. These two changes will help the core game experience be easier to drop into and much deeper in terms of variety and pursuit of personal mastery and they are a starting point for ongoing changes aimed to continuing to improve destiny in these regards. The next multi-year saga starts with codename Apollo. Wait, hold on. Before we start this section, let me talk about this gear and challenge. It didn't matter. One of the biggest reasons that I wanted to get better at Destiny 2 was because things were locked behind harder, more difficult, challenging activities. And it felt like an accomplishment when you could finish something hard and get something that nobody else could get. And that was one of the main reasons that I loved Destiny 2 was because you can do something hard, accomplish it and be rewarded for it. And other people are like, oh, how did you do that? You know, and that that's what got me in love with the game and wanting to, you know, make content for it. But then as soon as I wanted to do that, it went away. We started going more towards, well, everybody should have. No, we're going to change the way you get that, you know? And I mean, I did. I, I think them bringing back that feeling of you just did something hard and we're going to reward you for it. That. I mean, that's something that's been missing for a while, and that's something that should be it should return. The next multi-year saga starts with codename Apollo. As in Lur Hello, I think I don't know how to say that name. Lur it's like Lurs or the, the two dots on the U. Anyway, hello, I'm Allison. And I'm the D2 narrative director, fresh face at Bungie. I started doing narrative direction season in for seasons in fall 2022. And my first D2 expansion was Final Shape. We're proud of the final shape and the ending we created for the light and darkness saga. And we knew that the episodes that follow would act as an epilogue tying up the end dark hanging threads, but also setting us up for what's next. The episodes close doors and open new ones, purposeful ones, storylines, and are set in place to prepare us for what's to come. And what is next is our new saga. One thing I want to say about this season, the story of this season is really good it is really good but it is clouded by us not knowing what the future of destiny is the things going on at bungie but i think with this article coming out and us having a glimpse of what they're planning and a know that there is a future for destiny maybe it'll come make the story come to the front and show just how good it is because the story is really really good this season if you haven't played the new exotic mission Go play it like and, and listen, listen to the stories, listen to what's going on from act one to act three into the exotic mission. Listen to everything. It's really, really good. OK, anyway, you'll see teases of it and the later two <coughs> and then the later two episodes and then fully kick off with Codename Apollo. This next saga is also based around a core theme, much like Light and Darkness did. It will introduce plenty of new characters, factions, twists and more. There's a lot more here. We will say eventually, but we do not want to switch journey for you. This will be a multi-year journey, and we can't wait to take you on. Our first expansion, codename Apollo, is a non-linear character-driven adventure. Non-linear. This is an ocean? Oh, what are these? Oh boy. That looks pretty cool. So non-linear. Non -linear. linear means that right, there's a set line of what you're doing in the campaign, which you're following the story. Non-linear is like you start at A and you I see A B C. So you start at A and you go to C, then you go to F and back to Z. And, you know, previously in stories, the final shape, you experience the story as A B C D in a nice straight line. Linear. In Codename Apollo, our story takes places over dozens of threads you will explore and discover. So when you land on our brand new location and the story starts at A, 
then you can choose if you want to explore C first or try to get in B or maybe investigate D. And the options you didn't choose, don't worry, those other options are still open for you to go back and play through. You'll need to. That's one thing. Like if you ever played like Elden Ring and you're doing the story and then you you meet someone out in the wild and they tell you, you go do it, you might accidentally not linear yourself straight out of what you were doing before, you know? Like, if you go talk to this person and they say, hey, help me invade this person, and you go invade that person and you kill them and you come back and this guy's like, you need to go talk to this person and you're like, oh, shit, I just freaking killed him. Oops. I'm not saying that happens, Elden Ring. I'm just saying things like that happen in Elden Ring where you, you can play yourself out of completing a story. Like, for example, if you go too far and you go kill a certain boss, then everything else that you've been working on goes away. Anyway, back to this. Because the more you play and discover, the more the story progresses. So experiencing a certain number of threads opens up the next part of the story. The order in which you explore will be something you choose. But we have built Codename Apollo in a way the story always makes sense and flows from beginning to middle to end. There's no time gaining, no waiting for the next drop. Codename Apollo's story unfolds based on player progression that's cool i am down to try new thing destiny somebody crashed into the unknown oh i'm sorry destiny at its best is mysterious weird and not afraid to try new things this shift to non-linear stories isn't something that we're locking ourselves into but it is a structure that fits codename apollo best narrative structure of the releases that follow will be quite different a structure to suit that game's experience and we want to continue to debate with each expansion across both gameplay narrative you know what game? I know what game. Starfield. Starfield, you can go to a certain planet, start a mission, right? You go to the, the home planet. You go to the home planet and you start your constellation mission. But within that constellation mission, you can also join the Vanguard and start the Vanguard mission. And then you can, on your way to the constell first constellation mission, you can join the Rangers, start the Rangers mission. So, you know, that's a little bit unlinear. Anyway, this is about Destiny, not about Starfield. So when we think about multi, okay, here, here, into the unknown. This all sounds like a big change, and it is because when the rhythm of our story becomes predictable, or when characters or and our worlds fail to change, that's how we create a situation, not a story. So how can we innovate by telling a story that keeps up with our innovation, not one that slows it down? That means an evolving world, giving space for new characters. Growing and evolving factions, making sure the story we tell is in a world we have nurtured with the characters who grow in turn. We believe in rewarding the players for paying attention without punishing someone for not knowing something. That way, everyone gets to come along for the ride no matter how deep in the lore they are. You see that approach starting with episodes and continuing into the new year story. So when we think about a multi-year arc, what does it look like? Think of it as a constellation of stories united by a single theme. We will show you what that theme is later, but suffice to say we believe in it. Think of this multi-year arc as a web, not a line. Each release fits to the larger saga. We can't wait Take you on that journey. Story is easy to spoil, so I won't ruin the details for what the theme and codename Apollo is or what it's about, but I will give you something to look forward to. Apollo ends with a narrative gasoline that will propel us into the next few years with a clear theme, goal, and destination that won't come at you as it but will be worth the trip. It'll surprise you and it'll take us places Destiny has never seen before. See you. When the time is right and with that we come to a close well a new beginning really. over the next few months we will be dishing out more deep dives and engaging in more conversation we have no doubt that above breakdown of codename frontiers plans will spawn far more questions than we can answer but we will be looking to keep up with you up to date as we take flight keep an eye on the deep dive section as well as adding links to further topics thank you again for joining us on the first 10 year journey in destiny we've been through so much battling darkness is stopping the witness now it's time to look at stars again time to imagine the dream dream big and explore what our futures can be within this universe we have our heading and hope to see you join us along the way destiny 2 dev team very nice and so overall it sounds great i'm just happy that there's a roadmap and there's a future because and like i said before grinding everything that's going on within the bungee company on the business side of it and and that hopefully this kind of clears up one thing about the future. There is a future. They do have something planned. This isn't as much as I would like to know, 
but at least we know that they are planning something they are working on stuff you know so with this being said i feel a lot better about keeping about us making more episodes here on the podcast and so we will compete continue to do these things and now that my kids are back in school even more because we did like zero episodes in the summer here but overall great news i like their ideas they sound good and hopefully they can deliver you know they did mention that they were gonna modernize the ui and change activities towards so let's check out the modernized ui develop inside the portal welcome to one of many developer insight articles for codename frontiers over the next weeks and months to come we'll be covering a lot of different topics about changes coming to destiny 2 next year with these deep dives deeper dives check back with our paving the way new frontiers article for more information on our plans and always update these articles there as they are published the ldr the portal will offer several categories of activities each with a wide selection of new and updated activities refreshed every three months in each major update all activities in the portal will provide update and worthwhile rewards so it will be easy to find something to play the destination map will be cleaned up and focus on world navigation and accessing older activities the problem the destination map, also called the director, is Destiny's vulnerable activity browsing and selection screen. Over the years, it has grown to be very unwildly, making it harder to find specifically what's current and worthwhile to play. That and requiring even more expert knowledge to navigate to find what you are looking for. Even current players can have difficult fun difficulty finding a new activity while new and returning players having even greater trouble that is true the everything's everywhere like like hey let's play this cool wait where do you launch that from again oh i think it's over here oh, hold on let me read this nope this one nope that nope never mind it's not there it's on the other one oh let me go to the, oh yep there it is okay let's go you play destiny and you go and you're in charge of the fire team you know what i mean portal screen the portal screen will be new default activity select screen selection the next screen place in the current destination so curator quests Season pass, map, destinations, store. You got solo ops, fire team ops? Oh, my yawning. Pinnacle ops, crucible, and event. Okay, okay, I like that. Gambit will remain available from the destination map, but will not be rolled into the portal categories at the start of next year. We are still figuring out our plan for this beloved game mode, and we have some ideas ranging from closer integration into the crucible category to standalone events that feature it. We don't know what we want to do with that yet. We're thinking maybe... You know, we might just put it in the Crucible playlist. Or we might just accidentally drop it off this table when it break. Kind of hoping. Oops, just kidding. Damn, it's fun. We don't play it. Are old activities going away? No, except the some, for some seasonal activities that are normally removed at the end of the year. Older activities will remain available to launch from the destination map, just as they are today. Over time, it is our intention to clean up and then retire some older activity offerings that are well served by the portal, such as Vanguard Ops, these have lots of ties to existing content, though, and will need to be moved over gradually. Will raids and dungeons be in the portal? Dungeons? Dungeon content will be featured in Pinnacle Ops category, with some alterations to support challenge customization and reward rating. Raid content would not initially be present in portal categories. The long, clear times combined with a wide variation of experiences present some unique challenges that will we are still working through. However, we are excited to get this into the portal offering in the future one thing i will say about dungeons and raids that it comes to mind is bring back pantheon because it's fun but other than pantheon there's, there's a lot of good games coming out right now so i understand player base dropping like well people are going to go check out space marine 2 we're going to go play back with who people can just play that bring back pantheon and you'll get some players back okay paving and waiting new frontiers article is what we read rewards rewards that's what i want to say Okay, well, welcome to one of the many developers inside the articles of the codename Frontiers over the few weeks. Oh my god, that was the same intro. Now let's talk about core rewards. Core game, expansion, and event activities will feature a reworked reward offering that provides a deeper reward chase across a wider range of activities. Solo Dirter, TLDR. Weapons and armor will be available in a deeper range of quality across a wide range of activities. Core game activities will be de dedicated reward pools for different categories of activities. Gear will be labeled new gear. During the season, it is introduced and it is easier to recognize and build craft ground. Round. Around? A ground. Around. The problem in the past Destiny 2 seasons, only a narrow range of activities received updated rewards, leading to a narrow selection of activities worth playing. These reward pools tended to not be very deep either, with most chases bottoming out 
with weapon perk rolls or crafting recipes, and armor not mattering much at all. These problems have resulted in shallow, unsatisfying grinds in a tiny subset of the, of the activities eventually available to play, with their best rewards being a matter of luck rather than skill or mastery. The solution? Weapon and armor tiers. Now, I took a look at this before I started recording, and this is pretty cool. Weapons and armor tiers. Legendary weapons and armors will be available in a deeper range of quality tier that layers on properties like stat bonuses, enhanced perks, other benefits for weapons. This will be a similar to how adept weapon upgrades the baseline legendary. What did I just freaking say? It didn't make sense. For weapons, this will be similar to how adept weapons upgrade the baseline legendary. There we go. I, ta I said like three words that weren't there when I was reading. I'm sorry. The baseline tier of legendary weapons and armor will be equivalent to current day legendaries. The higher tiers being generally equivalent to adept weapons in terms of upgrade. Now, I just want to point out this swordy tier five scout rifle looks a lot like Kostov and it shoots at 600 rounds per minute with an aggressive frame that fires a three round burst and it has impact casing. What? Anyway, early mock ups with subjects change. Hope that changes. The higher tier of weapons and armor will be available from a full range of core game activities as rewards for higher challenge tiers and mastery of those activities. Rifles, complete sets of weapons and armor that are available as rewards from one or more activities. Some weapons are shared across multiple pools, but the majority of weapons and all armor are unique to a typical pool is a full armor set of each class and enough weapons to provide multiple options for each weapon slot. All these rewards are available to, at all tiers. So each reward pool is deep and supports a range of challenge in the activity they are associated with. The major core game reward pools will be updated every major update and will be for PVE rewards shared among more accessible PVE activities like Crucible Playlist. Pinnacle PvE rewards shared among more intrinsically challenging PvE activities like dungeon. Uh, it's just a breakdown of all time. Every time every expansion also contains two full reward pools. Expansion story, expansion raid dungeon. Okay. In addition to the above pools, some activities like events may be may have additions to the activity, such as individual weapons or armor sets. New gear will be a blanket category for all weapons earned seasons regardless. New gear will receive a special visual treatment to help players identify which weapons or armor sets are new and which may benefit from the things like artifact bonuses. Okay. Does new gear mean old gear is being sunset? No, not at all. This gear remains unchanged and ready to use in any activity. Okay. Can I still obtain old gear? Absolutely. Exclusive gear will remain available from older activities such as raids, dungeons, or destinations. What happen what what's happening to the weapon crafting? Weapon crafting is not going away and will continue to be a way to craft a specific role of weapons. Our intent is for crafting going forward to provide a catch up mechanism. Did I say that right? Mm, nice. For roles you weren't able to nab in the original. This may be because the source is no longer available or was graded or gated by lockouts. Was. But ultimately, we want crafting to support the weapons chase, not replace it. We'll follow up more details in a future article. Thank you. Stop with the crafting, man. I love. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that you can go. There's this thing where you can, you know, get five red borders and go craft your own roll of weapon. But I hate that they kind of added everything into it. So when there's a certain weapon that you can craft, you don't have to. Like, how can I say this? It got to where you're doing an activity just to get five red borders, not to get a certain weapon. You know, as soon as you get your five red borders, you're out of that activity versus playing that activity until you get the role that you want because i would play more if there was a good weapon that dropped a certain role for example when what, what rate is it Ted the hang cannon nation of beasts drops with outlaw and rampage or outlaw kill clip dragonfly kill clip or dragonfly rampage i wanted one of those so bad even when there was nobody to raid with i would go in and two they're scared of ribbon but so i started doing fire team fighters but what's it called the, the, the one they have in there they had they used to have you you log in load in and Look for a raid, but I did that. That's how much I wanted that gun. Guess what? Yeah, that's right. I never freaking got it. Now you can craft it, but you can't craft the role I wanted. You can't craft all our rampage, which is okay because they from both. Anyway, thank you for being here, guys. We got some great news today. If you haven't checked out the new season or haven't played into the story much, I have. We have clanmates that are still on Act One, so I know there's people out there that weren't interested in the Act. Go check it out. It's really good. Story's really good. The Act One, Act Three, 
do the exotic mission, listen to the story. It's really good, and it's getting even better every week. All right, guys. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate you all. And we're back. Thank the Lord. Also, I'm going to have nightmares about this Sorty Scout rifle, okay?